it's the last day of the summit, but I'm just so glad we are ending it with some amazing people. We just had Kimberly and now we have Idara Ekpo from Phoenix, Arizona. How are you doing, Idara? I am doing well. I'm blessed on this great Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Now, folks, y'all, so if you watched Kimberly's session, you'll know why I also have Idara here. Uh, Idara was actually the reason why I, you know, scheduled Sunday like this. So Idara, for the last, I don't know, since the pandemic, has been doing a self-portrait Sunday series where she literally builds everything herself, sets design, creative direction, all the things. Um, but before we dive into that, tell us a little bit about your journey. No, um, it's quite funny because I didn't plan to be a photographer. I really didn't have any creative bones growing up. Um, but I remember I took a photo class in high school just to get a credit. And I was like, okay, this is cool. But I never picked up a camera again. And then my senior year of college, or actually my 21st birthday, I begged my mom for a camera. And it was just kind of like, mom, like, and I'm Nigerian, by the way. So for me to tell my mom, like, <laughs> to give me a camera, she's like, this is going to distract you from your studies. And da -da -da. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll be able to make money. <laughs> and that was like the word that unlocked. <laughs> it was like the key that unlocked this whole journey for me because she got me my first camera. And then I remember it was my senior year of college, second semester. I had a friend that was like, hey, you have a camera, right? I was like, yeah. I have one, but I don't know how to use it. And she's like, girl, just take my grad photos. I'll buy you lunch. And when I tell you, she got the sweetest end of the deal because I did a full grad shoot. I gave her like hundreds of photos. And, um, but that's what really kind of started everything. I started just taking grad photos from my friends just because I felt, you know, let me just do it. I'll be able to make some extra cash because the $8 and five cents I was making an hour at that time was not it. Um, and so I started to just kind of caption my friends and that expanded to doing some events and things of that nature. Um, and then I made my way back home to Nigeria as an adult and being able to go back and capture my culture and my family, all of those things kind of just like helped my love for photography grow and just my love and helped create my love for storytelling. And then, you know, we hit the pandemic <laughs> and we can't go outside. We can't shoot with anybody. I can't even see my friends. I'm barely seeing my family. And I just remember feeling like I need to still be creative. I have to find a way to still be creative. And so I started to do self-portraits. I think the, it was the first one was like Easter Sunday. And I'm so used to every Easter. I don't care outside of this pandemic. I will be in church. Okay. I will be there in my Sunday dress best, everything ready to go, but church was virtual. And so I remember like still getting dressed and I took a self portrait cause that was the first time I got dressed during the pandemic and I felt really, really good. And so the next week I was like, all right, you know, I'm gonna do this again. I'll do this next Sunday. Cause Sundays I'm usually free. I try to keep it open. Um, and so I took my first self portrait for the self portrait Sunday series. And I think I just called, said, I, you know, I'm taking these photos so that my future kids can remember how fly their mother was in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> And it just kept growing. And every Sunday I would take it. And it was a kind of like, a, I basically call it my therapy session because it was my way of escaping everything. It was a sense of es escapism. I wasn't, there was no noise. It was just me every Sunday. I would kind of figure out whatever I wanted to shoot. I get myself ready. I would do the whole Issa Rae in the mirror hype session. <laughs> and then I would go and shoot. And then I'd be like, okay, cool. I feel great. I love this portrait. And then I would just take the extra step to share it. And I did that every Sunday for a very long time. And it grew so much. When I tell you, I'm shocked <laughs> by the kind of growth that came from the project. So that's kind of my journey into, you know, being a photographer. And I think the biggest thing about self-portraiture is that as a photographer, we spend so much time creating space, safe spaces for our clients and our, you know, the people that we capture, our friends, our families. But we don't oftentimes create that same space for ourselves. And so for me, going into that journey was a sense of healing and realizing like I needed to do a lot of um, healing for myself. And this project really allowed me to take my insecurities, find ways to make them beautiful and highlight them and create a portrait that now is a documentation of, you know, who I am that one day, you know, my kids will see or my future children will see or whatever the case might be. That'll always exist somewhere on the Internet. Ooh, 
Oof, it's Sunday and she came to preach. <laughs> I mean, like, honestly, listen, there's so many things I want to pull from. Like, the first thing about also me also be African and understand how <laughs> they are. Yeah. And I love the fact that you're wearing green because now I'm like, yeah, that's the prosperity <laughs> movie. The green plant there. <laughs> Uh, because literally, like that was like the turning point for them to like click. Uh huh. Like <laughs> my mom said, "Oh, money." And then as I started, it was like, you know, the, my parents were like, "Okay, cool. What you're doing is great, but like, you know, are you going to med school?" I'm like, mm, <laughs> "I'm not going to med school, but I'll do grad school." And as photography grew, and I started to do like things, different partnerships and stuff, my mom was like, "Oh." But both my parents, my mom and dad were like, you can, you can make money from this. You're like, are you sure you want to take, you know, a year? You can take a year, just do this and that. don't work your full time job. And they were so supportive. And it was honestly such a shock because it's very rare coming from an African um, household to have that kind of support, at least right out of the gate. And sometimes it takes for them to see that success, for them to feel like, OK, cool, we'll back you up because we see that you can be, you know, you're secure in it. I think there's a sense of. Um, I think it comes from a, a very, very genuine place because of the struggle they've experienced and they don't mm -hmm. want your, their children to go through that. Um, but sometimes you gotta just still, even if you don't have that support, you still gotta be able to just go and do it. And I had it from the beginning. My parents never said, don't shoot, but they were just like, I mean, it's not gonna be, it's just a hobby. They were calling it a hobby for the That's cute. Time. That's cute, it's a hobby. Um, but it grew and they it got to a point where they were like, you know what? You could really do X, Y, and Z. Or my mom is like, I, like she's coaching me on business. She's like, do you have business cards? Next time you go here, you need to give this to blah, 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 and yada, yada, yada. So it's a blessing for sure. That is so funny. OK, so the first one was Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, because naturally, you're going to dress up anyway already for church. But talk about actually just putting yourself in front of the camera. Like you said, we are photographers. We're behind the scenes. What was that like for you? You were not a model. Mm -mm. You, weren't, you weren't trying to aspire to be a model. <laughs> <laughs> was honestly like really, I think what helped was at the end of the day, like if I didn't like the photo, no one would see it. Um, so at the, in the beginning, it was just really, really fun. I will, I won't lie and say that like it didn't get difficult because once I was consistently doing it, I felt like people were expecting a portrait. And it would like, I felt it was a sense of pressure that started to come like, okay, every week I have to deliver something. And so I would have to remind myself, okay, why did you start doing this in the first place? I started to do it because I was bored. <laughs> I needed to create a space where I could just escape. And so I think once I just kind of focused on just why I was creating, that brought a sense of like accomplishment and joy in itself. And then me sharing it was just extra. Your like is extra at that point. I already enjoyed this entire process. So if once I share it and put it on the internet, it's just extra. Whatever happens, I'm going to close my phone. Y'all do what you want to do in the comments. Like, don't like, whatever. I already feel great. I feel refreshed on the Sunday and I feel ready for the week. And so that's what I think emotionally I had to be able to just allow myself to be free and allow myself to just kind of just be free and creatively as well. I think as you watch the project, you'll see that it just started off with just simple portraits. You know, I'm like, oh, I look good today. So I'm gonna take a picture of myself. To me trying to be like, oh, I, like, I have this concept or I, an idea, how can I execute it? Um, and especially doing it all by myself. So like, how do I, you know, focus on being the model? What facial expressions? Because a lot of my photos are very portrait wise. They're not full body a lot of the times. Um, so how can I pose myself? So looking for inspiration that helps me there. Um, becoming the makeup artist. When I tell you the pandemic helped me with my makeup game because it was the, it was cool before, <laughs> but now it hits a little different. Um, hairstyles, everything, especially hair because hair used to be a really big insecurity of mine. And so finding a way that I could take this insecurity and try different hairstyles and things of that nature to really help myself see the beauty in that, I think all of that really kind of helped me feel energized and, and 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 ready to do this every single week. That's so amazing. And you're talking just right now to see the beauty. Did that also just help you overall your confidence boost? Oh. Like see the beauty in yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I think that what I found was that every because I think a lot of my insecurities surrounded around like weight, um, hair texture, 
my facial features, the hue of my skin, the size of my ears even, because I, you know, a lot of teasing growing up. And so I think that once I didn't realize, I thought I was fine. I thought I wasn't as insecure until I started this project. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I'm every Sunday taking a portrait of my face and I'm insecure about the size of my nose. I'm insecure about my skin color. I'm insecure about, I'm taking a portrait and I, I think I have one where I called it a black woman and I have my hair in an Afro. I'm insecure as heck about my hair at that time. And so now I'm putting an image out on the internet with my hair in its most natural state. And I think challenging myself to do that allowed me to feel a lot more confident and comfortable in who I am. Because I think as an artist, I'm forced to find ways to make things look beautiful. I'm forced to like, when I take up photos of other people, I want them to feel their most confident self. So I want to be able to do that same thing for myself and be able to say, you know what, Idara, your hair's an afro. You might not feel the greatest right now, but you are that girl. <laughs> Remember, you are that girl. And I would tell myself this until I started to believe it. <laughs> Listen, just text me. I'll tell you every day. <laughs> you are that girl. You got to tell know. yourself that, you know, and it kind of got to a place where I said, I really started to believe. I was like, you know what? And I still believe it's the truth. I'm that girl, you know? And I think everyone should get to a place of that self-love and whatever helps you do. I think that's what a self-portrait project allowed me to do was I looked at myself and said, you know what? I love my, my features. I love what I look like. I love my melanin. I love my hair. I love who I am, what makes me me. Um, it just really allowed myself to embrace myself more. I'm really glad you're being so open about the insecurities because as photographers, all day we hear about is from clients and their insecurities. Mm -hmm. Can you Photoshop this out? Can you do this, that? Like, mm -hmm. how is that now like related to your just experience as, you know, working with clients? Like, has that changed the way you also like work, you know, edit with cl edit mm -hmm. clients or and tell them about your series and tell them like, no, y'all, I'm not going to Photoshop this, that, or like, does that translate it into your photography practice? No, absolutely. I think for me, photos should be, I never want my images to feel like it doesn't represent who that person is in real life. This is me capturing who you are in your essence and who you are today and being able to document that. And so whatever like you have going, I mean, I'll take out, if you got a little pimple or something like that, I'll take that out. Like, cool, I get it. We don't feel the best when we have like acne and stuff like that, but my, sorry, as far as features, I'm not going to make you look skinnier. I'm not going to make your nose thinner. I'm not going to do certain things like that. So you can feel like you're um, kind of bringing, like looking at the standard of beauty that we have in our industry. No, like beauty is you, it's who you are. And so you have to be able to get to a place of just accepting and loving that. And then once you're able to, I feel like it's kind of like an insert in, inside to outside process. Like once I started to feel like, okay, everything that I am is beautiful. I felt like all of the images were a reflection of that. And so I just, it makes me happy looking at these images because at this time I remember feeling like, okay, like I, I'm gonna put my hair in Bantu knots. Like, you know, like <laughs> I don't have no images anywhere in my life in Bantu knots. I said, today is the day. We're gonna do that today. <laughs> we're gonna put on some white eyeliner because I really like the color. <laughs> No, I love this so much. Um, I'm going to actually like keep scrolling on this Twitter thread um, real quick because I also love how you just talk about why you're doing it and it's deeper than just quote unquote a selfie. This has become layers, a skill. Yeah. Um, let's talk about how, you know, you are blurring all these lines. Have you ever saw yourself like as a creative director, makeup artist, hairstylist? No, that's, I think that's the, the crazy thing is that I had never seen myself taking on these different roles. I think, I mean, as a photographer, less, yes, I, I would plan shoots and stuff like that, but I didn't realize how important that was and how you can really take a concept and then plan for it and bring something to life. And so I think the crazy thing about this project is what I really love is that each self-portrait is so different. And so it took a different level of me, like, planning, thinking about what I wanted to do, hairstyle, the makeup, the outfits. I was ordering things off Amazon left and right and buy and return. <laughs> I was making mood boards for every single self-portrait. I would take inspiration from literally anything, whether it was a song I was listening to, a movie I saw. Um, I would just be like, okay, what, how can I take this idea I have 
and turn it into a, a photo? What do I need to do to bring that ele any elements and include in that photo to life? And so it definitely allowed me to feel like, okay, now I see myself more so as a creative director because I'm not just showing up and taking the pictures. I'm planning everything from beginning to end. I'm planning the shoot. I'm dressing up as the model. I'm doing the hairstyles. I'm doing the makeup. I'm sitting down in front of the camera and I'm doing the photography. I'm editing everything. And I do all of this in one day, in a Sunday. And then I, once I feel solid and happy with what I've created, I share it with the world at that point. I mean, I'm just, I love it, as you know, clearly, but <laughs> you know, <I'm> like this. <laughs> oh, no, but tell us, you know, when you are sharing your work with the world as a photographer, now you're sharing it as also the model, like, what, is it like, does it bring you two different feelings? Like, are you nervous or because I know you earlier, you were like, oh, I posted and then it's like, okay, you know, mm -hmm. y'all can do what you want, but as creatives, we're sensitive. We, yeah. No, we care. We do care. Yeah. I don't know. I, it definitely, I am very sensitive, especially because I don't know. I think that as a photographer, it's easier to take, not, okay, I'm not going to say it's easier, but I felt that taking a picture of somebody else and posting it, I felt like there was, I have a level of a, a, of a um, connection to it in the sense of like, okay, that's my art. But that's not me physically that people are seeing. Like they're looking at, okay, the, the tones of the image and how the image was edited and the composition, all these different things. So that's where I come in. But the focal point, whoever is, is whoever is in that photo. And so there's a little bit of disconnect that I have there. And that's why sometimes my, whenever I post pictures of my clients on my Instagram, they're like, oh my goodness, like you shared that photo. And they might feel a little like on edge about it. And I didn't really understand that. And then now every week I'm taking pictures of myself and I'm putting them out there. And it's like, I didn't know if people would think it was weird. I didn't know if people would think like, oh, who is she think to like be taking these photos of herself? It's, I didn't know if it would come off like self, like self-absorbed or whatever, because it wasn't meant to be any of that. I wasn't confident taking any of these photos. I try to just make myself look as confident as I could be so I can, so I hopefully it would help me with throughout this journey. And so it definitely was difficult because with so many different ideas and concepts, I felt like I'm really putting myself out there in a way that I haven't before. If you scroll through my Instagram feed, I feel like a lot of my work was of other people. Like if you get deep, you're not gonna see me nowhere <laughs> on that Instagram page. And then it got to a point where all you saw was me. <laughs> and you see me in all these different forms and, and all of these, these different creative ways. And I just, I struggled with that at first, but then I was like, you know what, let me own it. I feel confident as far as, I love the feeling that I have every time I, sh I do this for myself. So I'm just gonna keep doing it until I feel like I can't anymore. Um, but it wasn't an easy process for sure. I think that you know, anytime that you're putting yourself out there and posting images of yourself, especially with the way social media is, is scary. Um, and, and you never know what people are going to say. People are mean, they're rude. And I was worried that like, maybe I'll see a, a, a mean comment. And honestly, I, I think I probably got one bad comment, but everyone became so supportive of it. And, and, and I think that just really helps to make me feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. So many more lessons learned right there. Um, I'm just loving this. I'm pulling up this one in particular, because one thing I like about, you know, when you were sharing your portraits is the process as well. Like. So talk to us about just like your editing style and how this one in particular came to be. Yeah, um, it's so funny because this one, this one is so like, I it's one of my one it's one of my favorites. But it's just again coming. It's it was so different from what I was shooting in the beginning. I feel like once I got into like these self portraits, I was actually trying to be as creative as I want as I possibly could. And I think this one was really. I think it was inspired by Diana, Diana Ross. And I felt like, you know what? I want to bring out my inner Diana Ross. I want to feel like I'm back in the day, you know, probably going to hop on stage and sing a little, <laughs> sing a little song or something. Um, and I want it to feel really, really powerful. And um, I really, I also found myself really liking that dreamlike effect. Like I wanted it to look like, whoa, like, where did you take this photo? What happened? It doesn't look real. And that's the kind of, kind of, feeling that I wanted to have. Again, going back to that escapism um, and just kind of creating sets where it didn't feel like reality, essentially. 
And so for this photo, I remember I went to Joanne Fabric Store, which is like my favorite place to go. I'm sure the employees there know me by name <laughs> because I would buy the fabrics, I would buy everything I needed, and then I would come back the next day and return it. <laughs> But I went to Joanne and I picked up this like first I created the mood board and I knew I wanted my I wanted my natural hair and I wanted it to have like that Diana Ross kind of feeling to it like you know really nat big natural hair um, that kind of seventies feeling seventies eighties feelings with the fur and like kind of like um, like I was a singer or some kind of spotlight situation and so I remember I went to Joanne I found the fabric and I was like oh this could be really cute off the shoulder situation. I got the sparkly background from, from the fabric store as well. And I think I just kind of played with the rest. I was just looking at what I had. I was like, okay, I have these earrings. I'm gonna take, I'm a flat, like, you know, I think I gelled down my natural hair and I had like a ponytail I threw on. I was like, ooh, this is giving me, you know, a little 70s vibe or whatever. And I just sat down in my bedroom and I just started taking the photos. And so when I take the photo, I don't really have an idea of what it'll look like editing wise. It just kind of like, I just take the photo and then once I pick the shot that I want to edit, I just sit down and I allow myself to feel moved in whatever kind of way. And I found myself in a lot of cases, I kind of moved towards like a really dreamlike and cinematic look um, where I really want my skin to look as vibrant as it can look. I really want the photos to look airy and light. And so I think that's kind of like the, the approach that I was taking was just having fun with it and just kind of getting whatever elements I could to make, to bring into the photo and then sitting down and just kind of being free in my editing and just allowing whatever happened, wanted to happen, happened. I mean, this is just amazing. The creativity for me, but also just like, <laughs> I think also because you know, and, and this is another reason why I really wanted to to have you on here because again, you weren't aspiring to be a model, you are a photographer, but how, you know, has like the, even just the technical aspects, just like editing and color grading, how has that translated into your work with working with clients? I think that, um, I don't know, I feel like I just allowed myself to learn more because we're in a pandemic, there's nothing going on. And so I'm forced to really sit down and work on my craft. And I just felt like there was a difference in the tones of my images and the way that I would edit. I started using Photoshop a lot more. I was a Lightroom girl. Don't get me wrong, I still use Lightroom. But I didn't <laughs> realize how much, like, especially when it comes to color grading, how much you can do in Photoshop. And so really uh, expanded my, my editing skills and being able to say, okay, I'm gonna start in Lightroom and it, it, it impacted my entire workflow. I would start in Lightroom go into Photoshop and then play around with like selective color, hue and saturation, all of these different things to really bring more life into the photo. I felt like before I, I wanted these portraits to feel like it was, I, I wanted them to feel really lifelike, like almost like you can almost grab it. Like it's like it's there and it's, it felt tangible essentially. And so in that, when I'm looking at my color grading, I want things to look really vibrant. I want skin to look like it's freaking, the color is oozing off the skin, the, the, the screen. Um, and so I think all of those different elements, sometimes I'll take it into when I'm editing for my, my clients, I feel like there's a level of, it's a little bit more personal now, instead of it like, I don't like, I don't like to use presets. That's me personally, just because I feel like I don't want every shoot to look the same. And I think that's the one thing I really loved about this project was that every photo editing wise did not feel, this, it was not the same process. I would sit down, I would start in Lightroom. If I had a preset that I started with, I never allowed myself to let that be like where I would stop. I would push myself to kind of say, okay, what can I do differently this time? And I think I try to take that when I'm editing photos for my clients as well. So they feel like the photos that I'm creating for them, the shoot that I did for them is personal. You know, how can I make sure that I am editing this in the way that they feel like it's tangible? They see themselves in a different light and they don't see it. And they're like, oh, this looks just like the shoot that she did for blah, blah, blah. I want it to feel kind of like that, have that individualized effect to it, because I think that's what I got when doing my self-portrait project. So hopefully that answered that question, because I feel like I ran it too. No, no, that was, it's so, I love hearing people's process. And no, you are not rambling. You are me <laughs> We're good. Um, for those who may not know, leading up to this summit, we did free two free trainings with um, a former Adobe Creative resident named Andre Leroux. He is incredible. He talks about just like editing black skin, 
um, and just like the power of it and also just like the ethics of it. And I mean, he's just amazing. He's a former Adobe Lightroom ambassador as well. They're available on our YouTube channel for free, obviously. Um, so head over there to Blackwoman Photographers on YouTube for just the Photoshop slash Lightroom one-on-one -on -one trainings since we're talking about it so much. And so there's that. But I feel like we need to do a follow-up class with you and him about color grading because, I mean, it's like we don't learn these things at all, you know? These things, and I feel like we don't have – we don't have people that look like that, like us teaching it. And I think exactly. that is when I look at my photography career and like learning all of these things, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of creative people on YouTube, but it really kind of bothered me that I never, I can't say that, oh, there was this black creative that I would, I learned from on YouTube that taught me. And that's why educating is really, I'm really passionate about that because I think there's a level of individuality that I bring as a black woman to my editing and how I go about it. And I think that I want to hear more of people's processes that people that look like me hear more of their processes because it's so personal. And, you know, I find it to be really personal. So when I look back on my journey and learn and growing as a photographer and going, I went to YouTube university and, and it helped me so much and it brought, opened up my eyes in so many ways, but that wasn't, I didn't learn from really any black creatives in that sense, you know, and so I, I want to be able to, I love that the, that space is, is, is there and I want to be able to participate in it more because I do think there's a level of, obviously like there's ethics behind it, but there is a level of personality and person, like it's a personal situation as far as how I go about my editing and how it's really, I, it's really important for me to feel like I'm capturing black and brown skin in the best way possible because I know how difficult it is to find photographers that will be able to do that. You know, growing up when I was in college and taking grad photos, you know, all the photographers that were taking grad photos were white. <laughs> and so whenever a friend would go do a, a photo shoot, she would complain about being orange or now I look like an Oompa Loompa or I don't really feel like the lighting was, you know, set well for my skin and da 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 da, da. And so that's why I started taking photos for my friends because I was like, listen, he didn't do it right, so I'm going to do it better. Like, I'm a, I got you. <laughs> I'll take care of that. But I think we need more people that look like us sharing that because we we know we I don't know we have the experiences and we want to make sure that the resources are there. No, absolutely. We know obviously our skin tones like are completely different. Everybody's like we have all these different hues and things yeah. that people don't realize that goes factors in, into editing. Um, and there's a question just you know for those who may not know the term, can you explain what color grading is? So. And this is not going to be like, a, this is color grading. This is not for visionary.com. It's okay. <laughs> no. For me, color grading is when you, especially, okay, if you're looking in Lightroom, you'll see that there's a color grading portion of it where they have like the three different wheels where you can essentially add colors to your, your uh, mid-tones, your highlights, and your shadows. And that's where color grading is. That's what it is for me. It's really playing with the tones of the image. And so instead of just having like, a general colored image, you can really kind of get a little bit deeper and play with, okay, I have these these shadows that are black. Do I want to play with the tones in the shadows? Do I want to make it a little bit purple, orange? What do you want to do with that? Same thing with your highlights and your mid-tones. You can really play around, add colors in there to really grade your image and bring, bring a different like element touch to it. And so um, that is a game changer. When I tell you my images went from eh, <laughs> to like really... Cinema, especially because I love to watch like movies and I would see images and I'm like, okay, I love how dark this is, but I love like there's a tone of purple in the in the in the blacks. How can I do that? And so being able to play around with those tools in Lightroom really help. And then if you're in Photoshop, I love to play around with selective color because essentially it's it's doing the same thing. So you can play around with the hues and different colors. So instead of just having a red, you can play around with the different hues in a red. You know, you can remove some blues, you can add some magenta and really play around with the way the color looks instead of just stay, standing, staying with the standard red tone. You know, um, you can play around with your blacks, like I mentioned, your whites. I really love to add color to my whites. I like to make them kind of look a little blue or even yellow. It just, I don't know, it has like a vintage effect to the photo as well. And so I think it's really important to just play around with color and just see what you like. And those are the tools that I usually use to, usually focus on to help bring my images to life. 
That is amazing. Um, okay, I'm gonna pull up your your work again, and I want you to point me to one that you love the most. Okay, and walk us through that process. Um, just like you know, even just the fact that you come up with concepts every week, <laughs> like mm -hmm. how? <laughs> how? I, don't um, even, I couldn't tell you, girl. I think it was I pulled oh, it. This is one of my favorites. The Nina yeah. <laughs> Yes. This one, this one, I, this one was, and I don't want to get emotional, but this one was really difficult for me um, mm -hmm. just because, oh, I'm going to get emotional. Oh my gosh. Oh no, 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 no. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> okay. We cried on day one of the summit with all your boys. Day one, oh, we already no. cried. <laughs> okay. Sorry, but um, I think that again, a lot of my images, and I'm sorry that I'm just crying, but a lot of my images have, hair is a really, really big thing for me. And so with this one, what it's though? okay, take your time, take your time. Do not apologize at all, at all. I didn't expect I was gonna be, I, I've seen all these <laughs> videos when you brought this one up, I'm like, who's that girl? Like, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I remember, like, I think the time of this was, like, uh, you know, a lot of the, the protests and everything that was going on, but I just remember, like, an insecurity I had around my hair and never wanting to wear it in its actual, like, form, and I remember, like, picking it out, and I just remember looking at it, I was like, I don't know if I want to take a photo, I don't know if this feels good, but there was a sense, after, like, I sat down on that camera, I felt so powerful. I felt so powerful. Like I was just like seeing myself in my truest form, seeing myself with my hair, my nose, my lips, and just being able to embrace all of that. So, oh wow. But yeah, it's one of my favorite images because just being able to, I don't know, just truly see yourself and not feel like you're masking anything, <laughs> you know? Woo, wow, 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 wow. Y'all, I did not expect to cry. I didn't know <laughs> issues here, so. You so still look amazing. Okay, first of all. <laughs> Who's that girl? Who's that girl? She's me. <laughs> no, I, and you know, I had no idea that I brought this. I, I would literally, I saw this, and I saw this, and it really resonated with me when you first posted it. Like, what was this? 2020. <laughs> 20, May 31st, 2020. <laughs> and I'm like, and but you were right. There was so much going on. So much going on at that time in the world. Even, I mean, still so much going on now. But then it was like, especially as Black folks, we weren't feeling like we were appreciated. We weren't feeling valued. I mean, before then, I mean, as Black women, how many times... Are we always being criticized for every little thing? It's it's exhausting. Your nose, your lips, but no, now no, now it's cool to have good, you know, big lips. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's exhausting. And yeah. when I saw this, I I felt like I could take on the world. Like I'm a beautiful black woman. And at times I don't feel that way because the world makes me not feel that way and i think that's that's what makes me so emotional about this image because with everything that was going on i even put in the the, the caption i said if i'm being honest i did not want to do it i did not want to shoot that day because i just felt like there's so much going on i feel i feel like i'm not seen and i feel like i just feel i felt really uncomfortable and i said you know what like regardless of that i want to feel powerful i want to own who i am as a black woman in my truest form and i think that's why it was so important for me to have my hair and an afro because that's who I am. That's what my texture looks like. That's me. Um, and so I just, it makes me so emotional because it's like you take again those insecurities and you find ways to make them beautiful, make them the focal point of each of your images. And so I think that was a challenge that I had in every shoot was how can I focus on my insecurities around hair, facial pictures with my lips, my nose, um, skin tones, how can I really, um, bring that and bring those insecurities and put them on a platter and say, you know what? <laughs> They're beautiful. Y'all going to see it. <laughs> Y'all going to take all of this because it's beautiful, you know? 
It, it really is. I mean, the, the chat is filled with that. And I'm going to keep reading these comments up because it is beautiful. Because again, these are not the images I saw growing up. No, exactly. And that was the thing. I wanted to be able to say, you know what? And I think that was a huge part of me as a photographer in general. There's a lot of images that I did not see of, of people that look like me in a, in a beautiful light. And that is my responsibility. I, now that I have a camera that I can use and I have this medium, I take it on as my personal responsibility to mm -hmm. put out those images. I don't know how many people are going to sit, are going to see it, but at the end of the day, I know I did what I was meant to do. And so for me to be able to sit down and document myself, and that's, I mean, that was the thing. I can't, we're in a pandemic. I still, it's May 2020. I wasn't seeing anybody else. So I had to force myself that I still have, my art does not stop in the middle of a pandemic, period. So I have to really, if it takes me being uncomfortable to take this self portrait, I don't care because at the end of the day, a message is being shared, art is being shared, and this is being documented. And hopefully somebody can see this image and feel connected to it and feel empowered to go out there and capture the way they view the world, how the way they view themselves even. Oh, so powerful, y'all. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna get emotional watching this. Oh. <laughs> um, no, this is amazing. And you know, there's a comment talking about the last photo uh, reminds them of Nita Simone because it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I'll pull up the tribute right now because I'm <laughs> tributing these Nina Simone. What was Nina, Nina Simone? Simone? Yes. And I had to make sure I added that. I said, any inspiration I have, I'm going to make sure I give the credit where it's due because there is no me without, you know, the women that came beforehand. And so I think mm. that's another really big element is using past photos and past events and how can I take my inspiration from those that came before me and bring it into my own work and I think that's I think a lot of art is just kind of you never want to copy anything but how can you take elements of something that existed before and and bring it into your image in your own way use it as a blueprint yes exactly and I don't want to be I don't want to be praised for it. it's not my it wasn't me that thought let me put the little <laughs> my eyebrows. I saw that somewhere <laughs> No, but no, but the, they're also referencing that we were used yeah. as the blueprint. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. We are. Yeah, we are the blueprint. And so at the end of the day, like, I'm the, you know, we're the blueprint at the end of the day, so. Oh, I mean, this is just amazing. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing this screen. Cool. Um, for that way, you can take me to one in particular that, I don't know, stands out to you or just even where you really felt like, wow, your creativity really like jumped out. Like, and then also like, let's dive into the technicality a bit of it some more. Like when you're doing self-portraits, y'all, I try. <laughs> <laughs> there you can be, yeah, my photo turned out blurry. Um, <laughs> the lighting, um, it will never see the light of day. So <laughs> It's not that easy. So let's talk about that. Pick one for me, please. <laughs> um, let's see. All right. So I think let's go with I'm stuck between the color red one that we passed and then crown. So the red one right there. Let's go with that one. I feel like um, for this one, um, I really wanted to focus. I think this is where in, in my journal journey as a photographer, I felt myself really starting to grow was because I wanted to see how can I take different elements and help them and bring it to tell a story essentially. And color is a huge aspect of my work. And so and think, I think in this sense, um, I call this one the color red um, because I was trying to think of like what concept I can shoot. And I remember this week, there was a lot of different emotions I was feeling again going through 2020, all of these protests and everything. I think that I was at this moment feeling two different emotions. I was feeling a lot of anger and frustration um, just because of everything going on in the world, but also a sense of love and connection and community um, by how people were coming together, especially in the black community. And so with this portrait, I really wanted to use color because I think color um, brings forth different emotions, right? So when you look at the color red, red usually was gonna mean like love and passion and all of those great things. Um, but it can also mean anger and fire. And so what I, I really wanted to take color and have it be the focal point. So red being the focal point of the entire image, but then also focusing on my facial features and making sure that that connected with the meaning of the color, if that makes sense. So in this one, 
the color for me, it meant, you know, love, it meant happiness, it meant passion. And because I was feeling a lot of those emotions. So I wanted to make sure that I captured that in my facial features. And then if you go to go back to the, the, the other photo in this set, this is where love is a little bit more like that fire, that rage, that frustration, you know, that anger that's there. And even I, I love this photo. I don't know if anyone catches the detail, but you can even see in my eye like that kind of red that's underneath there that kind of brings like that fire in the eyes as well. Um, I wanted to make sure that I was capturing that because I think it kind of connects and tells the entire story. Um, and this is, again, when I was posting these portraits, I try to explain everything as like, best as I can in the captions, just so people understand the, the level of intentionality that comes as well when planning and executing these shoots. It's not easy because, again, I'm by myself. And as I was shooting this one, I think I had tool. And so I like put it over my head and I wrapped it around me, but I had to hold the remote and make sure I could like <laughs> get the, the camera to actually shoot the photo. Um, but I, I, it's, it's definitely probably one of my favorites, this one. And then the other one crown are probably top two. I, I can't even rate them, but <laughs> right in this moment, I'm going to say that one. I'm going to pull up crown right now. Um, cause you, like you said, you will, you have to control it and you have to position yourself and frame yourself composition here. Like position, yeah. what was the lightning setup like? Ooh, so the lighting setup in all of my portraits, I was shooting this, all of these portraits are shot in my bedroom. And so this actually at this time I was in my parents' house and um, I had, I didn't have much space. So I had my bed, my desk, and then I had a large window. So what I would do is I would set up everything in front of the window. So my backdrop, so if the window's here, here's my backdrop and then here's me in between. And so that was my only lighting story. That's I think in maybe one of my portraits I had um, right there, perfect. One of my self-portraits, I think I had like a small like light that I use, but in general, it's all natural light just because I can't give myself a headache. It's not me that's gonna be figuring out how to <laughs> work X, Y, and Z light. It's not me, I'm, I'm not come to kill myself. <laughs> I cannot struggle today, I keep it simple. That's it. And then um, the other technical, like outside of that, so that's a lighting situation. And then I usually set up my backdrop and then I have my camera sitting on a tripod I have a little Amazon Basics uh, remote and I just kind of like set it to the right setting. So I'll usually have to like move back and forth and you can really, I made this difficult for myself because I know that there's like the Canon app on your phone so that way you can see yourself, adjust the settings. Me, I wasn't doing none of that. I was moving behind the camera, adjusting, <laughs> take a test shot. Okay, no, I don't like that. I don't, I, so let me bump that up or let me change X, Y, and Z. And then once I got the setting that I wanted, then I would sit down to shoot. So you, I think maybe in here, I just kind of like tuck the remote underneath my body. <laughs> so I would just press it, tuck it, position myself, and then the photo would be captured. Um, but this one is one of my favorites because it was inspired by, I remember I was watching um, Beyonce's Blackest King film and there was a level of like the theme for me of that royalty feeling throughout the entire film. So I wanted to take that and create it in my own way. And I think the one thing I really appreciated about that film was all the different hairstyles as well. And so going off with the, the same theme of hair and the hair being like an insecurity, I think when people see natural hair, they put it, they stereotype it as being, you know, unprofessional, rough, you know, difficult, you know, things of that nature. And I really wanted to make sure that I showed one, the versatility of our hair, because I think it's crazy how my, my hair can just defy gra gravity. It can go in so many different shapes and forms. And so that was one big thing, but I wanted to incorporate the flowers into the style because I felt like, I don't know, that sense of blossoming, essentially. Like my hair, people might think it's difficult, it's rough, it's it's ugly, whatever they want to say about natural hair, especially for sea hair, but then bringing in the flowers that bring in that sense of delicacy and beauty and softness as well, and kind of trying to, have those two themes contradict themselves essentially. Um, and then I, this was a dress that I had sewn maybe years ago. I said, you know, this gives me a sense of royalty, so I'll wear it. Purple also having, a, being a color that, um, purple is a color that to me like means royalty. Um, and so I just wanted this photo to be strong, royal, but also in the same time, feminine and soft. Because as a black woman, I'm capable of being all of these things. And as a black woman, especially, I'm in my season of softness. I don't, I'm not. Listen. I'm in my season of softness. I'm trying I, to be strong. 
Yes. yes. So it's, it's luxury. <laughs> That's what I need. I want that in my home. <laughs> but I want that in my photos. I want you to be able to see that sense of, you know, how feminine I am, how soft I am as a black woman as well. Because again, we don't have, we, I think, again, growing up, going to my experience and not seeing enough black women showing up and being soft. And instead of always having to feel like you had to be the strong woman, the difficult woman, the da 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 da. I want to, I'm not that, okay? None of us are that. So I'm showing up as my soft, delicate self. <laughs> and y'all are gonna take it, but at the same time, still powerful in that. Absolutely. There's a few follow-up questions about just the technicalities. Um, one, you said the Joanne Fabric Store, people know you by name, but where are you <laughs> the backdrops? Um, and then when it comes to self-portraiture, is there a different lens that you suggest would work best? So when I'm shooting, so all my fabrics, again, are from Joanne Fabric. And the reason why I went to Joanne's is because as long as you don't, and hopefully nobody from there watching, but as long as you don't cut the fabric, they will take it back nine to all the time. As long as it's not stained and you don't cut it, they're going to take it back. <laughs> uh, whereas another local fabric store, it's kind of like you buy and keep. And I've got the space for all the fabrics that I had in these photos. And so there's one thing. And then um, what was the second te technical question? I just lost it. No, no, no. The other one was um, oh, your, the lens. your lens. Yeah, yeah your, lens. your camera body situation. Yes. So I was shooting these with my Canon 6D and I would either interchange between my, 30, my Sigma 35 millimeter lens or my 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. So the Sigma lens, I think is what I shot this one because it's a little, it's wider. All of my very close up portraits, like the color red, as well as the black woman, um, those were shot on a 50. And so depending on what I want to include in the photo will kind of help me gravitate towards what lens I'm using. Um, this one, I really wanted to capture the detail in the dress because it's a, a beautiful gown that was made. So I, I shot with a 35. And then also because of my hair, I wanted to make sure this was difficult. And this is why I was like leaning on the floor because I said I need to get as much of this hair <laughs> as I can get in the photo. Um, and so that's why I use my 35 so it can be wide enough for me to capture all of that. Because keep in mind, I'm still shooting this in a small bedroom. So there's not much space I have. So I really have to play around with the lenses that I have to kind of see how much I can capture in my images. So it just depended on how much detail I wanted to capture. So in this case, I wanted to get my dress and my hair. I used the 35. But in some of the portraits where it's just really my face and maybe some like a little excess around me, um, those cases I'm using a 50. This is so just like amazing. Um, you mentioned just being in a small space, you know, like I mentioned our previous speaker, Kimberly, she was also in a small space and then now has a bedroom that she uses. How has that like shifted your mind when you're thinking about just even with clients, like framing, mm -hmm. like even just like not knowing what setups you may have or whatever it may be? I think that, I don't know, it, just, it, it put me in a place where I'm, I have to work with what I have, you know, and just being able to not put pressure around going into a shoot and just allowing yourself to be free. And I think that's a huge part of a lot of my work now is I try not to come into it stressed. I try not to come into it worried about resources. We're just going to work with whatever we got. So if I have a small little corner, I will place you and make sure you're comfortable. And then if I have to work around and find different perspectives, I'm going to allow myself to feel free and comfortable to do so. And so I think like it's removing that pressure around it. And sometimes it, it's inevitable, it's going to show up. But I think a lot of it is like mentally, I have to be clear. And I have to feel like, okay, this is what I have. And I just have to make it work. And so I think that's how I kind of, especially if I'm working with a client and we're in a smaller space, or if I don't have like the resources that I think I need, I'm just going to have to work with what I got. And we're going to have a fun time while we're doing it at the end of the day. And because that energy is there in the space, and because I'm focusing on creating a positive energy, while shooting, I feel like that helps kind of make the whole process a bit easier. So I think that's how I focus on it. I try not to focus on what I do or don't have, but just try to focus on how I feel, how my client feels in the space, and then allowing that to drive the shoot and allowing there to be freedom. Um, I do plan, obviously, like elements of my shoots, but when it comes to the end of the day of shooting it, I just want to feel free and comfortable, and I play my favorite music. I want to feel loose. And then whatever I can capture in my small little space is what we're going to capture. And I kind of make that make do in that sense. 
I love that. And I have a follow-up question about clients. I think photographers, obviously, like, you know, we just want to take click, click, right? We want to do the photo part. Yeah. There's other roles in it that, like, positioning a client, directing a client. Like, mm -hmm. so has self portraiture helped you in that sense as well? Absolutely. I think that now coming from the perspective of, I think, and I, I really do encourage every photographer, if you can, to try to take self-portraits because then you realize how uncomfortable <laughs> a lot of our clients feel. Um, because I, before, and I always came with some kind of direction. I had like, you know, maybe some inspiration photos from my shoot and things of that nature. But I think it's different when you go and experience it yourself. So even if you don't take self-portraits, if you have someone take photos of you, you kind of get the opportunity to experience how your clients are feeling. And so for me, being in front of the camera and how awkward I feel. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know what to do with my hands. I, is my hair okay? Da, 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 da. All of those things really helped me kind of get a different perspective outside of just being the photographer that wants to just click, click. Um, now I have to really focus on, again, making sure my, my client, whoever I'm shooting with, feels comfortable and feels safe. It feels like I am here to capture you. And a lot of that is through like genuine connection. Sometimes I spend a lot of my time talking to my clients. Sometimes I'll play music if I can, or I'll show them the photos while I go as well. I am the way that I am my biggest hype woman. I try to be that for other people. And so while we're shooting, I try to, I always say that the beginning of the shoot is probably the shakiest because you're the, probably the most uncomfortable. About midway through, you feeling like that girl. And by the end of the shoot, ain't nobody going to be able to tell you nothing. Okay. <laughs> you're going to leave that shoot. I promise you feeling on top of the world. Feeling like no one, ain't, no one can speak to me anyhow. That's how you'll feel at the end of it. That's my goal. Um, so a lot of that is like making sure that while I'm shooting myself, you know, I always wanted to go back and see the photos and making sure I'm doing a good job. And do I need to change anything and have that level of reassurance? So now I provide that to my clients. Like, well, I don't, I don't like to show up to shoots and not show my clients anything because. I know you're probably wondering what's going on behind there. Like, do I look okay? Do I like, is it coming out? I know you're telling me I look great, but sometimes you need to see it for yourselves. Um, so I think that's, those are the things that I, I try to do more. I try to like show them as, as I'm going, um, give words of affirmation and make sure they feel comfortable. And I think a lot of it is a part of like just creating that safe space for them to feel like, okay, I feel safe here. I feel like you're working for me and wanting to like, you're working in my favor essentially. And that really allows them to feel comfortable throughout the entire shoot. This is amazing. Um, I want to talk about just like what this series, this personal project really has mm -hmm. done for you in terms of your just your career and just like the mm -hmm. things that have come out of this. I mean, one, you have a Team Vogue article, talk about <laughs> tips. Um, two, as somebody pointed out in the chat, you got represented in your bio. Like, did that come from this as well? Like, talk about <laughs> from what you just did this for yourself. It was, I think that's the craziest thing about this entire process thus far is the amount of opportunities that came from it. And this is why I love to, I, the one thing I try to tell people is passion projects or just projects for yourself for fun is what's going to bring opportunity to you. And, and just creating in your own way, finding your own lane and whatever makes you unique as an artist and finding a way to just stick to that, opportunities will naturally come. When I was doing the self-portrait project, again, it was just for me. I was just saying, you know what? I feel really crappy throughout this pandemic. I'm going, waking up and going to sleep in the same pajamas. I need to change that on Sunday, okay? <laughs> on Sunday, I need to feel like the baddest girl, all right? <laughs> and I will take these self-portraits and I'll share them, but at least I feel good and I'm getting what I need out of it. And then I'm sharing it and I'm like realizing people are seeing it. Likes are going up, followers are going up, which again, that's, I don't do it for that, but that was a great result that came from it. And then I got reached out to my agency, like, oh, we love your photos, we love your work. Like, you know, then that's when the conversation of being represented came. Um, I had the opportunity to work with Apple for, in, for the first time in 2020. And that was what blew my mind. <laughs> I said, I said, Apple, as in, as in, Steve Jobs, like, <laughs> as <laughs> in, <laughs> I said, you guys want to work with me? <laughs> I said, well, as they should. As they should, as they should. But I still had a little bit of I said, yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> Not that Nigerian. No, <laughs> me. Hold <laughs> me. No, but as they should. But, like, they had reached out. I got an email that said, hello from Apple. 
when I tell y'all, I closed the email, I closed my Gmail app. <clears throat> and I was with my sister. I said, there's no way. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> and I was able to work um, with them on the launch of, of, of one of their iMacs and, and being able to do that. And and right, they uh, we made an agreement at that time where they were able to they they showcase a lot of my work in their stores now. So I think if you go to Apple's, well, hold on, they showcase your work where? Yeah, if you go to. So that was I think that was the moment I said a small project that I did, a small me is sitting in Apple store. I said no, it's it's only my God. Like yes. <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. Not that church. <laughs> I went into, I remember, so um, with the launch of one of their Mac computers, they if you go into, and I think it's still up now because it was a certain length of time, <clears throat> excuse me, but if you go into their stores and go on their Macs and go in like the Photos app, you know how they'll have like, you know, different display photos there. There's a folder with my name and my self-portraits. And so I literally, huh, I went into that Apple store. I remember I was in sweats. I had my mask on. I said, I'm going to be discreet. I'm just going to go in and see if this thing is actually here. And I saw the photos and I just sat there staring. Like I didn't move for probably five, 10 minutes. I was just staring at it. Then I thought, okay, Dara, take out your phone, take a video of it. And then one of the workers came up to me and she was like, hey, do you need anything? I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. And she looked at the, fo the photos and she looked at me and she said, is that you? I said, yeah, girl, that's me. She said, no, 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 let me go get my manager. <laughs> she went and got her manager and was like, we need to put the photos on the big, you know, on Apple, they have the big screen there. And she's like, we need to put the photos on the screen. They put the photos on the screen and I started crying. I was like, that's me, y'all, that's me. So that was an opportunity that came and just the level of exposure there. Currently I'm working with, um, I, I, I'm working with uh, Skillshare to put, put, put together my first like class which educating is a huge part of like a, a huge goal that I've had over the past few years. So that's a great opportunity. And just the amount of just, I don't know, just being able to partner. I do a lot of work with Adobe as well with their Adobe Live. So I've been able to pop up and like show my workflow. I've also been able to host and share and be able to connect with other um, creatives that way. And so I think of like a lot of this, if not all of it came from, <clears throat> and I'm not, a, I'm, and, I, and this is one thing I will say, my work was good beforehand. <laughs> it was great beforehand. So before I did this project, the level of like validation that came from that, I think that I still had to be reminded. I've always been good. It took people a minute to be able to recognize that, but it's always it's me. I always was good. You know, I already possessed all of that, and so I try not to get like caught up in any of it because I'm just like this doesn't validate anything. Like this isn't like. I was always that girl. Now you're recognizing it too, which is great for you and your company. But as for me, I'm chilling, you know? But still, I went into the Apple store. I said, hey, is it my God that put my face there? Oh, man, I can't, I can't, I need a moment. I can't, I can't. So it's just been great to like see the amount of when the Team Vogue article came out and the, the different interviews that I was able to do, working with Skillshare now, collaborating with Apple and Adobe, I, it, I'm like, it's about time. Like you say, Polly, it's about time. <laughs> Listen, like you said, they now are recognizing the greatness that you already knew within yourself, about yourself. I mean, that is just amazing, y'all. This was a personal project. Yep. A personal project, a self portrait project at that, y'all. You know, and it's so crazy because I also wanted to be careful. I never wanted to, I still take self portraits now because, again, it's it's what I love to do. I mean, y'all can see the self portrait there. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm still a photographer. I think that's what my goal is. I don't want, I didn't want to get, I was afraid that I would get caught up and stuck in the self portrait, you know, photography space. Um, because that it wasn't always that's not my that's not my full journey. It's not my full career. A lot of my work is just storytelling. And I, how can I make people feel comfortable? And how can I tell the stories of the people in my community? And I'm a part of that community as well. So my story is just as important. And so that's where the self portrait part comes in, but also still making sure that I'm doing that for other people, whether it's shooting a wedding or I'm shooting a, a brand partnership or whatever the case might be. I'm making sure that a story is being shared people are being able to connect with it and they're feeling that their voices are being seen. That is the goal at the end of the day, whether it's my own, whether I'm in front of that camera or somebody else. 
No, this is just amazing. As somebody said, we love this testimony. Yes, <laughs> testimony. Y'all got a lot out of me. You got the tears. You got the tears. <laughs> we, we laughed at you. We cried with you. Like, this is beautiful. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, there are a few more questions. I know we're at time. It's cool. We go okay, okay. So I'm gonna ask you. Got you. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> so um there was a question about the Skillshare. When does that drop? How can we sign up? Yes, yes. So that'll drop sometime in April, about mid-April. I'm still working out through the production of it. But if y'all follow me on Instagram, you'll be able to get all the information. I'll make sure it's shared. I would have said that I would have had like a newsletter. Your girl hasn't done that, that part yet, so I don't have that. <laughs> but um, if you follow me on Instagram and then just follow my website, I'll be sure to share that information. But about around April 18th, that's when you can expect the skill share. Yeah. Like, oh, April, give myself grace, April. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. We will be there. We will support uh, <laughs> these chats. <I> <laughs> I mean, okay, now I'm losing my train of thought because these chats are talking me out. That would be saying, take me to train. Thank you, Austin. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so what would you say was, like, the biggest lesson you've learned um, by doing this? I think that, for me, the biggest thing that came out of it was the healing. I just... Uh, there's a lot of technical things that I learned as a photographer and there's things that I can take throughout my career, but how I feel now, and I'm going to get emotional again, how I feel now compared to how I felt then. And so I think that is the, the biggest thing that came out of all of this. That I didn't expect, you know, was feeling, I feel, I feel so good. <laughs> you know, I feel I feel happy, I feel, and my name means joy, so I feel like I'm actually stepping into that, that true essence, and I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, and I feel like I can see myself truly now, and so I think that's the biggest thing that came out of this project was that I feel, I, I feel like I see myself now, you know, I feel like before I was seeing how, I was seeing myself through the lens of how other people viewed me, and now I gave myself the opportunity to truly sit down and see myself for who I am and, and be able to work through the insecurities that I had hidden. You know, I think, oh, I'm cool. I'm good. I'm not insecure about X, Y, and Z no more. And you sit down in front of a camera and the camera tells it all. Like, this ain't baby girl, you're, you are insecure. <laughs> and that's okay. And, and, and I love your, I just love your honesty and vulnerability here because like we tell our clients, oh, you look good. You look good. But yes, yes. we need to, you know, maybe we lie to you a little bit, but no. <laughs> No, no, I'm kidding, clients, I'm kidding. <laughs> but no, but we we people believe that in ourselves. Like, how can we actually have them believe it for them, too? Exactly, exactly. And so I'm like, if I don't feel like, I feel like that's that's why like this project has helped me in so many ways throughout my career, because I feel like I know what you're feeling now. I don't just come from the perspective of being a photographer. I'm not here to just click, click, clack and go away, <laughs> you know? I'm not just here to... Just take a nice photo. I'm really here to make sure that you feel seen. And it, that's my job at the end of the day. And so once I was able to do that for myself, I said, I feel, I feel good. You know, I feel seen. I wasn't, I didn't take a lot of photos, you know, before this, before the self-portrait project came. And so once I was able to start doing this for myself, I said, I feel like I see myself in all these different forms. Like I'm versatile. I don't have to, I can be who I want to be tomorrow. I don't have to be. I get to make that decision. I control my narrative. And I think that is what really helped me with this project. It's like, you know, everything that you, like, you control everything at the end of the day. I mean, God controls everything, but like, I, I, you know, <laughs> but you control, you control how you feel. You control what impacts you. You control, like, how you can choose to wake up and, the, and how you choose to go about your day and the kind of mental, like, I, I control that. I can take power back. And I just think that like once I started to do this project and see myself and see how powerful I looked in those photos, I had to tell myself, that's you. That's not no alter. That's you, girl. That's Edara right there, <laughs> you know? And so I think that's the biggest thing that came from this entire project was being just in general, like there are things that's done for my career and the connections I've been able to make. But what it's done for me 
emotionally, spiritually, phys- everything, mentally, it's just, it, it just kind of, nothing else competes with that. Oof, oh, man. No. <laughs> this sermon. Oh, listen, my goodness. I didn't mean to preach on a Sunday, but. <laughs> L- listen, I, I, I'm going to like literally have to like sit with everything you just shared. <laughs> Uh, one, of my, one of my final questions for you, you know, as you mentioned, like the success of what if this brought to you, you know, unexpectedly, uh, well, maybe expectedly, because like you said, you were that girl, okay? <laughs> so with that, how has that like helped you shift your mindset and just like also your pricing, your rates? Like, mm. like how has that, how have you leveled up in that sense as well? I think that, um, ooh, that's a good question, Polly, because sometimes as a create as creatives not even sometimes a lot of times we tend to kind of fall short in that area and so we think like oh i'm charging too much or i'm not worth x y and z and i think what when i started to see again i already i I knew i was that girl i just didn't know if that girl was worth a certain coin (laughs) and so now that I, i think it's really important to make sure that you're valid like people are going to pay because they know what they're paying for. Like there's some, there's a reason why they came to you. So then the day like, you need to make sure that you walk away from that. And not every project, again, there's not, there's not saying every situ- situation that I do, like with friends or shooting, you know, something locally, I don't have to, I don't feel like in every case that I need to walk away with something or a certain amount, but I know my worth. And that's for me to make that decision. I'm not allowing you to tell me what I'm worth. If you don't want to pay my price, cool. You could, you can go somewhere else. Like that's okay. <laughs> like I used to do this thing where like I would give people my rate, and then they'd be like, "Ooh, I don't know." And I'm like, "Okay, you know, I could also do blah blah blah." <laughs> like <laughs> we could do this. I mean, that works too. Like because I just really wanted the work, and then I said, "No, no, 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 no." You know, it's not you that wants them. They should want you. So if they want you, they must pay. You must pay. You must bring me money. <laughs> Like, yeah, and this I don't I don't just I don't just give you good photos a good product I give you a whole freaking journey I give you a whole experience you know and so being able to kind of I think for me knowing that worth now I'm like okay you know these prices need to need to go up a little bit they just just you know tell yourself that you're worth it because you are you don't allow anyone else to tell you what your worth is. You get to make that decision and the right people will come and pay that price. Mm. And especially now that you know, you've been doing all these different roles as well, creative direction, all, all these, and that's- You must know, it's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. You want me to come and be photographer, creative director, art director, this, that, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Once I realized what I like, how the levels of it, I said, no, like the level of, like, I haven't been, I've only been shooting for about like what, it's, I think it's been si- like six years as of January, which is still a long time, but I still know that my level of experience and what I'm able to bring to the, pay- the, the, the table is worth something. So I think that it's a big goal of mine because I want to be able to continue to expand. I want to be able to do more brand work. Um, and I want to be able to collaborate with, with, with different companies and stuff like that. And I want to show up and know that I'm worth being in that one, being in that room for one, but I'm worth the coin too. I deliver girl. And this is what I tell myself. So this is, (laughs) I have to tell myself this. I go in the mirror and say, you know, you're worth the money. You're, you're, you can deliver, you know what you're doing. And once you go in that mirror, you tell yourself, ah, no one can speak to you in email. Someone said, charge them. <laughs> he must charge them. So charge them is from Young Z. Um, <laughs> from our, 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 our session with Young Z um, last year in, in partnership with Everyday Projects. So it's like the essentials about photojournalism and documentary work. And she did a session on finances mm-hmm. and managing and being like your own manager. And that was literally the thread was charge them. Yep, that's, charge, that's them. Like, charge them because the money is there, especially if you're working with like these companies, the money's there. Charge them. Charge mm. them. I mean, okay. I know I'm 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 being uh, using up your time. Girl, um, no, what you mean? I, I, just, 
<laughs> I'm just again like this has been such a an amazing conversation. Your honesty, your transparency. I mean, you've inspired people to pick up their camera and do self portraits um, because it's bigger than just. Again, y'all, it's not just a selfie. And there's so many different lessons learned and ways you can apply it to your work as a photographer and take it back to clients. Or, I mean, as Idar has done now, translate that into getting more coins. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah. It really um, is. I have. <laughs> I, I did not know what to expect coming into today. I was like, listen, Idar, you got it. I said a prayer before I hopped on. I said, God, please be with me. And this has been like, Polly, the space that you create is mad, though. It's mad. Like, <laughs> so thank you for allowing me to, to show up and, and to feel, because I, I didn't expect to cry. I was like, I'm going to be strong. I'm not going to cry. But you know what? I'm still strong. I, whatever. I cried. And so what? I cried. <laughs> you cried. cried. There's, there's, there's I cried. strength in that. There's strength in yes, that. Yes, absolutely. Um, there's one last question here yeah. from Crystal asking, what's the project you want to tease us with? Just so we know what's cooking in the kitchen if you can. Is it, I know you shared the Skillshare. <laughs> Are you able to share anything else? Or should we just follow you? Follow me. Let's go follow but I think the next thing that I, and I've been saying this for maybe two years now, but it's really important for me to have physical copies of my work. And mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that I didn't cherish. I know I have been wanting them, but I also want to be able to share that and provide that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I want to, at some point this year, have a book. Um, even if it's just a book with the self-portraits, because I, I don't shoot them as often, but they're still so powerful and there's so much meaning. And I, I think I want to take what you guys see on Instagram, the captions, the words that I put and put that into a physical form. So that is something that I have started working on. And so hopefully by God's grace, you can see it sometime this year, um, but definitely follow so you guys can be updated on that. That is beautiful. We're going to follow. We're going to support that, the class, everything. Awesome. Any last words of advice for us before we go? I just, I think the biggest, like I said, I said this already, but the biggest thing is that you have to be able to believe in who you are and your value and be confident in that. Because once you're able to walk in that, no one can speak to you any kind of way. And I think beforehand, people were able to do that. Now, I'm sorry, I don't need you, you need me. And so I think that it's just, it's not an easy process. It's not, and there's still days, I don't feel like this every single day and that's okay. But I just think that like reminding yourself of what you can do and who you are and the uniqueness that you bring and the value you have, you know, if you have to sit down and reflect on that, like that's what, and then again, that's what the self portrait project did. It really forced me to sit down and reflect on who I am as a person and my spirit and how I feel about myself, but then also what I'm able to produce. And now there's a level of confidence that I have now that I didn't have then. And so give yourself, create that space for yourself. I think is what I want everyone to know, like create that space for you to feel truly seen and, and feel like you value yourself. Because I think once you get there, you value yourself and you see yourself, everything else is, sec everything else is secondary, but you have to do that work first. You do. I mean, you do it. Like you said, it does. It took time to get to this moment. And now that you have, it's poured over into all the facets of your creative journey, your business. I mean, it's poured over in so many ways. And that way you translate it to how you move with confidence just as a whole. Yeah, from absolutely. money to everything, everything. I mean, this is even a reminder for myself. I said, like, sometimes, because like I said, like, it's not every day that you feel confident. So sometimes you need to like sit down, and remind yourself, like, oh, let me pause. You know, are you actually walking in your value? Like, just take a moment, check yourself. And then, check yourself. <laughs> I, go, I look at my portfolio. I said, mm. when I doubt my worth, I go to my website. <laughs> okay. I said, I said, I did that. Nah, bro. You think you're going to come and talk to me anyhow? And my website looks like that? <laughs> you're, you must be mad. No. <laughs> You also need to drop a book of affirmations. Please. <laughs> Don't buy that too. Or I'll, I'll just play this every month. But <laughs> play this every month if you need to. Some Make journaling some affirmations or podcast one day. Who knows? <laughs> something. I'm gonna need that. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Pamela, Pamela this. Yes, my crown sits straight. Ah, I really think that's the essence sure. of it. <laughs> make sure it's sitting straight. Mm -mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Zara. Like this was just beautiful. Your creative journey, you're letting us inside your world, just being so open about it. I mean, thank you so much for your time and energy today. Absolutely, thank you so much for having me. I truly just appreciate the time and the opportunity. So thank you again, Polly. Polly, girl. <laughs> you that girl. Thank you, Polly. You <laughs> both that girl. <laughs> We are, we are. Oh, Listen, y'all, I hope you got something that you needed from this. I know I did. This will be on replay. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we did two free trainings of Adobe slash Adobe Photoshop slash Lightroom. It was heavily focused on Lightroom, but did touch on aspects of Photoshop with Andre Laro, um, a former creative Adobe resident and a former Adobe uh, Lightroom ambassador. And so that's available on our YouTube. And I'm gonna hit you up after this where we can coordinate this color grading session um, because there's highlights. <laughs> I mean, if you are willing, I know you have no, to go through your willing. representative. I have to go through well, your anytime manager. you show up in my email, you have me, okay? <laughs> I have to go through your manager now, but <laughs> no, go, nah, please. <laughs> we will do a color grading class with Vidara as to continue this, you know, this momentum. Um, yes, and I think as Regina just said, our homework assignment, y'all. Everyone go do a self portrait. Do a self portrait, y'all. I'm, I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna try it again. <laughs> I can't follow it. I'm, I'm sorry. Gonna try it again. I, I, so I have your, your team book article bookmarked. I'm gonna drop it in the chat one more time. Your phone too. This one was taken with my iPhone. Yeah. Girl, you, you, you yeah. just what? That was girl. Yes, that was taken with my iPhone. That was taken with my iPhone. Like that. That. That's what blows my mind. Like you don't have to. If if the, using the tripod and everything is too difficult, girl. I literally sat here, took my picture. I got my phone like this. Yeah. Or the exposure. And I'll probably make, maybe I'll make a reel or something or something to put on Instagram, whatever Instagram yeah. wants me to do. But I literally took it. I think the way the light was shining in the space, it was, um, there was like a streak of light somewhere. So I stood in it, put my phone like this, lowered the exposure, took the photo, and then I did some editing in Lightroom and Photoshop, and bam. Uh, my mouth felt almost, what? Girl, yes. It doesn't matter what the. T I mean, listen. Uh, it was a selfie. It was a little selfie. Like <laughs> the tools that you you can literally use anything. Yeah, you can use People anything. are so focused on equipment. Mm -hmm. Use what you have. What you use have. Oh man. So okay, we're gonna go. We're gonna run to Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> And we're gonna start. We're gonna start doing our self portrait yes, sessions. Yes, Rachel Joanne, Rachel Joanne, and. Yes. <laughs> oh, we're gonna, and we, I mean, listen, this was amazing. Y'all have been amazing. <laughs> the so comments, cool. I can't keep up. I mean, like they've been wild. Like I love it. Bam. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so Joanne needs to cut you a check. I believe needs to cut you another check. Bruh, like <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Because Joanne's is a pretty coin. Let me tell you right now. Like, when you go, yes. my room, it's a little expensive. That's why we were tripping. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't go to that store tomorrow and they look at me any kind of way. It's not damaged. So, <laughs> I didn't make anything out of it. It's funny because every time I go, they're like, oh, what are you going to sew out of this? Like, well, maybe some, you know, make some pillows. <laughs> oh, it's a nice top. And then I bring it back and they're like, oh, it didn't work. Oh, no, I didn't really like. <laughs> hey, we do what we gotta do. I mean, Kimberly said the same thing. We do what we gotta do. I'm gonna have to all of that. Nope. <laughs> the space, so. Oh my goodness. Okay, I will not take up any more of your time, you guys. Thank you so much, Idara. This has oh, been yes. a pleasure. I mean, y'all already know where to follow her. No. Um, we have some homework assignments to do. Yes. We have, you know. This was amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.